Welcome to another episode of the Visser Podcast. Subscribe, ring the bell notification, invite your friends. Let's get to it. Today we're going to have an update on pentadecanoic acid, better known as C15. Uh, if you want the background story, go back to the first episode I did on C15. But today we're going to go a little further. It's, in short, it's one of the essential fatty acids, one that's been discovered 90 years after the well-known omega-3, uh, EPA, ALA, uh, omega-6, of course, LA. So 90 years after we've discovered a new one. And why did it take so long? Well, guess what? Science and the medical profession threw it out, so-called bad fats. Saturated fat is considered less beneficial for our health. But in that saturated fat, there was one molecule, a fatty acid, C15, which had amazing benefits. And we're just discovering this. So today we're gonna go over and see what this new compound has to offer, what the latest human studies tell us about pentadoic acid. So what we've seen is that in human studies, elevated C15 basically correlates to improved metabolic health, keeping your weight stable. This we've seen with the child study, which I'll show in a bit. And really what they were doing in this child study was giving these kids 200 milligrams of C15. And so that's the doses they were working with. And we, we have to establish a couple of things. One, I'm going to show you what foods have this C15 in it. Secondly, I'm going to show you that the supplementation of C15 actually goes into our system. So we need to look at that because, you know, we can have a supplement, C15. If we take it and our system doesn't take it up, then we're just, you know, doing it for no good reason. So one of the studies we'll, that we'll talk about is how it absorbs into the body, specifically the, the supplement and that it's vegan friendly. And also we're going to discuss the pathways on why this happens when we don't have enough, what happens to the body, what happens to the liver, what happens to the heart, what happens to the pancreas. We're going to discuss this in detail. And we're going to look at the benefits and the benefits include, you know, from metabolism to everything, chronic disease, you name it, uh, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, the list goes on, pancreatic cancer, etc. The list goes on. It's a very strong, and the research right now is, is very strong on it. We still have to follow it. There's still more research to come, but this is an update. And I'm going to introduce you to something that also just kind of you know, hit the scientific radar, which is oxidation, ferroptosis. And so we're going to talk about ferroptosis, what this is, what this does, and how we can protect ourselves against it. C15 exhibits anti-inflammatory properties, which is basically protective to the heart. And it looks like it supports aging. It supports longevity. And it, you know, in similar to the compounds like rapamycin and metformin. Rapamycin kind of tops out metformin. Metformin you should only take if you're diabetic, pre-diabetic. If you have those issues, metformin would be for you. If you don't and you're still active, you're still training, it's not that good of an idea um, to, to take. Uh, rapamycin, both of these are prescription medications and C15 is just a supplement. Um, and I say just a supplement because you can buy it off the shelf. I'm going to tell you the supplement. I'm going to show you the supplement. And we're going to look at how relevant this is to uh, cell-based activities uh, with leading to longevity. Um, it's an important compound. Currently, the University of California, San Diego, is actually investigating the effects of fatty 15 as pure form of C15 to further validate its, its potential benefiting cardiometabolic, immune, and liver health. 
and will stay tuned on their results and we'll get some of the uh, preliminary results in this. And there's different trials, there's different human trials hanging. Um, going on right now. So that's what I wanted to discuss, the human trials, the evidence where we see that when C15 is elevated, people have less problems with cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, their weight, and also they live longer. So we're going to go right into it. Dr. Schwimmer just posted a, uh, his results from a study that he did on 237 children and found that higher levels of C15 in their blood concluded uh, and, and basically saw in this study that uh, these kids had lower levels of fat in the liver. So fatty liver disease now affects 10% of US children. Um, it's becoming a big problem at a younger age, which, which it shouldn't. Uh, so this one is very promising. Okay, I'm gonna put up my first chart and that's just foods that uh, we see have the C15 in them. For 100 grams of this food, um, C15 in milligrams, okay? And we know we need to be around 100 to 200 milligrams daily. So if we look at this gram, we see salted butter, 830 uh, milligrams, cream, full fat, 450, cattle, 410, cheese, cheddar cheese, 390, uh, milligrams sour cream 350 milligrams cheese a lentil 350 milligrams and this these are questions that have been asked uh, from the first c15 podcast i did so i wanted to bring this up secondly we're going to go and look at ferroptosis okay now this is a new way of cell death we didn't know this okay this till recently and how does this work and how does c15 work so we're going to go into Kind of the process of this. So there's the next slide, which is how ferroptosis accelerates fatty liver disease, type 2 diabetes, and ca cardiovascular disease. Okay, so we're going to go through it. First thing we'll see is a fragile fatty acid in the cellular membrane. So it's all about the cellular membrane. And C15 basically, you know, is a very strong chain. This actually strengthens our cellular membranes, whether it's red blood cells, whether it's every cell in the body. So that's one. When we have a fragile cell, because we have fragile fatty acids in the cellular membrane, we get a breakdown and then we get lipid peroxidation. Okay, this is where the lipid starts oxidizing. Third, uh, we have intercellular iron and this is ferroptosis. This is where ferroptosis starts. Okay, then we have massive ROS, which is reactive oxygen species, and this creates the inflammation in our body. This creates the inflammation in the cell, and we know when we have inflammation, it wreaks havoc, okay? So together, what we're seeing is an attack on the mitochondria and cell death, and that is ferroptosis. Ferroptosis is cell death, and that's why I said in the beginning of the program, ferroptosis, if you're not shielded with C15 on your cell membrane, it's over. It's game over. So how does this process work? Well, we got systemic lipid peroxidation. So we got three things happening here. Systemic reactive oxygen species being created and systemic iron overload. Now, don't get me wrong. We need iron, especially women need iron. Okay. Iron deficiency is a huge problem. This is not the same. This is when the cell membrane breaks down. When the cell membrane is weak, then we've got, we've got this whole new process happening and it includes iron. So what we're seeing with the liver is iron overload, fragile lipid peroxidation, insulin resistance goes up, and we accelerate the fatty liver disease and NASH. With insulin resistance, we have accelerated type 2 diabetes, decrease of insulin secretion by the pancreas due to the same system, same three things that are happening in the cellular, on the cellular level. And so you can see that all of a sudden the whole system starts breaking down. And finally, the heart. We got direct cardiac tissue injury, worsening vessel inflammation. So when vessels inflame, like even if we have high LDL, and it's a bad LDL. If we don't have inflammation, no problem. If we have inflammation, then we got a problem. Then it's gonna start reacting with the cell wall and creating plaque. So 
we've got worsening of the LDL, so we've got more bad LDL coming in, which accelerates coronary heart disease, heart failure, and arteriosclerosis. So this is the pathway, this is what, and we're, we'll go deeper into this. This is the pathway that we want to avoid. And this is what kind of, you know, the description of the pathway of ferroptosis. So we want to avoid this. And ferroptosis really has been recently discovered. So we need to be able to counter this. How do we do that? Like I said before, prior to this discovery of C15, which came 90 years after the discovery of omega-3 fatty acids, and linoleic acid, omega-6 fatty acid. The evidence that C15 is an essential fatty acid includes these four parameters. One, dietary C15 intake is directly and reliably correlated to circulating C15. Now this has been documented. This has been researched so that when you do take it, it actually elevates the level of C15 in your body. So important to know so we know it works that's one two people with low c15 concentrations consistently have right, higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes cardiovascular disease and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease which we know is detrimental or nash c15 supplementation effectively raises circulation of c15 concentrations and attenuates components of two type 2 diabetes cardiovascular disease in relevant animal and human models. C15 has a dose-dependent mechanism of action. At concentrations, it consists with circulating C15 levels which directly target type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, fatty liver disease. These C15 mechanisms of actions include AMPK and PPAR alpha activation. So, combined, these studies show that C15 is meeting the criteria of essential fatty acid. And again, we need more studies, but we are already very far with this. We can really see that it is an essential fatty acid and it's something we need and it's something that's been declining and also declines with age. And it's been declining because, guess what? We threw out the saturated fats. Now, are all saturated fats good for you? Is saturated fat as a whole good for you? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. So, you know, I err on the sides of supplementing. Um, I'm eating some saturated fats, like in cheeses and some whole milk, but I don't want to overdo it. Butter. Um, but I don't want to overdo it. Okay? In a cohort study involving over 200 pregnant women, those who ate more cheese had higher erythrocyte. Uh, umbilical cold erythrocyte and colostrum, C15 concentrations. Conversely, women who ate more reduced fat dairy products had lower erythrocyte and colostrum C15. Again, this is something we need to look at. Now we're going to put up another example, another pathway example that I want to go through. And this is, uh, should be up now. C15 deficiency, what happens? Red blood cells membrane with the total fatty acids starts breaking down. We get increased uh, red blood cell cell fragil fragility and lipid peroxidation, which causes macrophage, erythrophagocytosis. We get the copper cells, iron overload, same thing we went through, ferroptosis in the liver, type two diabetes, NASH, cardiovascular disease. And what we're seeing is when C15 deficiency in systemic cell membrane, systemic cellular fragility and lipid peroxidation. This is what happens, this is what I showed. Systemic ferroptosis, systemic ferroptosis accelerating aging. We don't want that. Systemic iron overload, neurodegenerative disease and inflammation. So this is, this is what we're seeing on a cellular level. And so we really need to look at this closer. We need to keep an eye on this and I myself am starting to use it, have started using it, because I think the evidence is there and it's clear. So let's see what happens with C15 supplementation. Okay, we've got an increase C15 greater than 2.2% total fatty acids in the red blood cell membrane. This increases red blood cell stability and lowers lipid peroxidation, okay? 
attenuated macrophage and erythrophagocytosis, attenuated iron overload, reverse phagoptosis components, attenuated anemia, attenuated type 2 diabetes, attenuated NASH, attenuated cardiovascular disease with lower LDL and lower pro-inflammatory cytokines. So you were seeing inflammation go down. We're seeing the positive effects of this. And really, listen, I, and this has also been asked, this is what I use, okay, fatty 15, see it? Let me, okay, so yes, if we're looking at, you know, one of the things that were, was discussed in the previous thing is, yeah, but you know, uh, Stephanie Van Watson, who's the dolphin lady who basically discovered the C15, uh, she patented it and now it's a, you know, she's selling it. She's the only, her company is the only one that can produce everything like that. And so there's a complete thing about this is not real, you know, this is just a sales uh, promotion thing. Well, guess what? I've been in the pharmaceutical industry my whole life. I grew up in it. And when Eli Lilly brings in, uh, Munjaro, you know they bring in these new drugs that are new now the the drugs right it's patented they 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 have that patent they make money on it they did the research on it we don't question it right and even when these drugs after 10 years of or more years fall out of patent and we are able to get them as generics we still choose the brand name of the product Okay, when we're looking at when we're looking at pharmaceuticals, so you know to say that um, no, she was just smart. She's the one that that did all the research. She's the one that found it. She's the one. She said, you know, hey, let's do this. is normal, and I don't see in any of the research that there's questionable things that are being done, questionable tactics. So you know, as long as that doesn't change my opinion stays this is this is critical it's good it's something we need to look at and it's something we need to evaluate to include in our diet that's it um, that's what i can give you c15 is is up to now shown to be solid um, the evidence is there in human studies the evidence is there in animal studies yes there's more studies that need to come and we'll be looking at that closely but up to now i'm i'm excited i'm excited so thank you. Um, please ring the bell notification, send it to your friends, join the program, and I'll leave links to the research in the description. So thanks again. See you next time.